Now we shall look at a very important aspect of service provisioning. That is, if a certain user is using a service at a point in time, a user has to have a complete, a gratifying experience from the network which is providing a service. So it means a service has to start and a service has to continue and a service has to terminate as per the user requirements. In all, this is known as the service continuity. We look at how NGN looks at service continuity. Uh, what are the options which it has in order to make sure that uh, the service continues? And uh, what are different features which are available at the transport and service stratum? So service continuity actually means that a service should not be disrupted. Whether it is uh, 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 the movement of a certain user within a certain network, that is the access network remains unchanged and the only wireless connectivity is being switched from one wireless access point to the other. Then inter access network that is moving from one access network to the other. A uh, complete movement of a user such that the IP address also requires to be changed and a user can switch from one terminal to another and the service should not be disrupted. So it means that service continuity can be termed as the inability to maintain an ongoing service or a session of a certain service. It involves uh, some deep insight into what is the current state of uh, uh, variables uh, parameters, memory utilization, etc. Uh, the network environment for the user should remain fairly consistent. That is, a user should not feel a certain drop in service because from the user's perspective, the network certainly has changed. Uh, then the sessions which have already been established should not be revoked and there should be no requirement to re-establish a certain session uh, so that the service continuity is realized in full spirit. NGN actually considers the uh, uh, service continuity from the network perspective. That is, the networks could be all wired, could be wired and wireless. So under the umbrella of the fixed uh, mobile convergence, uh, using the IP multimedia subsystem, IMS complete architecture, uh, the service continuity is uh, realized. Uh, service continuity also implies that there could be interaction between uh, circuit switched and packet switched networks. Uh, for instance, a call is being initiated from the IP domain and it is terminating into the legacy network, such as a PSTN or PL PLMN. Likewise, a uh, uh, TV service, once it is getting being, it is being broadcast uh, from traditional uh, you know, broadcasting station uh, and if it is going to be streamed live on uh, uh, the uh, PCs or the uh, tablets of end users, then uh, the circuit switching and packet switching uh, or the broadcasting stations have to collaborate with each other uh, in real time. This is uh, not easy, but this is exactly what NGN realizes through the immaculate system of uh, uh, IMS. Uh, at the transport stratum, uh, the uh, basic support is provisioned through the mobile IP. Uh, that is uh, IP version 4, mobile IP as such, that uses uh, uh, the concept of uh, registration and uh, tunneling and the uh, handover, the care of addresses, the uh, uh, home network, the foreign network, etc. Uh, in, in, in service stratum, uh, this is uh, a little more tricky because the, uh, providing transport or the physical access is the first step. But uh, the features which are associated with the service are so many that it needs separate discussion that we shall shortly do. One effort by ITF has actually been the um, uh, initiation and experimentation with the host ident identity protocol. Uh, basically, it is a mechanism uh, to uh, decouple or disassociate the uh, IP address uh, which uh, plays a pivotal role in, in, in identifying a certain service from the socket point of view because we know that a socket actually is identified through source uh, ports, source IP, destination port, destination IP. So IP address becomes so important that once a certain network interface with a certain IP address is involved 
in a certain service at the uh, initiation and if there's a requirement to change it it becomes quite complicated and difficult to to uh, change the ip address so uh, this uh, host identity protocol aka hip introduces something new it is basically a 128 bit host id tag which is uh, above the uh, network layer so it means now the transport layer does not interact with the ip address to open the socket rather this 128 bit host id tag is used it's a very interesting concept because now the namespace of uh, socket is going to be extended uh, but uh, the overall impact on the global internet remains to be seen um, at the uh, above uh, at the network layer if you look at the uh, options we have above we've already covered but uh, below ip uh, there are certain uh, uh, initiatives for instance the 802.21 uh, the media independent hand handover it is a mechanism through which uh, the uh, um, local identifiers of different networks are exchanged with each other to allow seamless handover. Uh, now, this particular handover is uh, um, IP agnostic. It means the IP address is not changing, but the physical data link layer identifiers are changing. So, um, certain protocols like uh, Wi Fi, WiMAX, Ethernet, uh, um, UMTS, etc., use their own identifiers against the same end to end socket um, to make sure that uh, the service stays continuously available as we had briefly uh, uh, earlier said that service stratum needs more time uh, so here we are going to now look at how uh, the service stratum uh, considers service continuity as a very important uh, aspect so first of all we need to understand that uh, the services need to adapt dynamically to the changing uh, environment changing network conditions the, the the dynamism of the network for instance the traffic load could change in no time the qs capabilities could vary from one network uh, which was earlier adopted to the network to which the user is switching uh, then the capacity of the uh, egress network and coming down to the ingress network could be a time varying phenomenon with regards to the active number of users uh, the user preferences could change uh, in the middle once a service is being provisioned. Uh, then there could be certain service level agreement between the operators and inter-operator uh, handover is required so that the service should continue. Uh, for this uh, complicated uh, uh, wish list, uh, there are two options. The first one is again uh, focusing on multimedia traffic as such. So the multimedia service uh, continuity uh, actually considers all these services which are required to be uh, uh, there um, uninterrupted and the overall coordination, synchronization and their availability for providing the multimedia traffic. Now all the particular multimedia traffic types such as voice, video, uh, data, interactive games, etc. need to be uh, provided through the always on connectivity and synchronization of services which would offer this multimedia traffic uh, then there's a specific case for voice because the voice is something which is uh, relatively straightforward as compared to the enormity of the multimedia uh, traffic so seamless voice services also need to be synchronized these have to be available uh, let's look at certain interesting uh, service continuity scenarios we have three scenarios here on the left hand side in a we have service continuity on the same terminal once the access changes from for instance uh, mobile access to wi-fi access or the other way around so it means here the connectivity is the uh, inter access network connectivity as an issue in b we have the service continuity between different multimedia terminals for instance for the same service on the same network now the traffic needs to be provided from the mobile terminal which is which could be on a umts which could be on 3g wi-fi etc or, or wimax and then it needs to be switched to for instance laptop in that case the service is going to be continuing only if proper set of services functionality and resource availability is ensured by the network and then lastly we have the service continuity once the 
terminals, telephone terminals change. This is a typical example of uh, how the circuit switched and uh, packet switched uh, networks interact with each other. We see here that we have a mobile access on the left hand side and we have a plain old telephone system that is a circuit switched network. So it means now a whole new set of services would be required to make sure that signaling which is different in both these networks takes place. The services which are required on both the ends are uniform and they are synchronized with each other.